Hey everyone, Jeff Chandler here, uh, Director of Education and Programs with the Canadian Association of Snowboard Instructors. And uh, thanks for tuning in on this September afternoon. We're uh, getting excited for the upcoming winter season and um, these little mini uh, mini webinars or mini info sessions is something that we're gonna try to, uh, try to put together for you in the next few weeks so that you're uh, up to date on what's coming up in the, in the coming season. Um, so the goal for this uh, little presentation or this webinar here is to uh, just give you a bit of a walkthrough on our latest blog post, which is the What's New blog post that you can access through the homepage of our website. And um, really what this does is it just um, runs through some of the big uh, kind of organizational changes and technical changes that we've been working on through the, through the summer. And uh, we were down to, I know the blog Article says about 100 or so days until snowboarding starts, but we're even uh, less than that now. We're probably at about 70 or 80 days. So um, lots of exciting stuff coming for the coming season and um, lots of changes definitely over the last few months with Cassie organizationally and as an association that, uh, that are um, all kind of stacking up to be positive things. So um, <clears throat> I'm just kind of going to walk through point by point and give you a bit of a Kind of a verbal description or of an overview sort of description on what's uh, what's been happening for us this summer so um i guess the first thing that i'll highlight here is this uh this first section here where we uh earlier in the summer in Ju june or july we said goodbye and happy retirement to dan Gensch, who is our um original and founding executive director and ceo and uh we definitely wish dan the best and he was our uh, he was our leader for 25 years and he founded this association and he um, helped us to, to build it to what it is today. And so after a, a long run and productive run, we, um, we uh, said goodbye to Dan in July. And we also said welcome to our new executive director and CEO, which is um, Simon Holden. And so many of you or a lot of you will know Simon. He's been a fixture on the technical side for Cassie for a long time. Simon has been a Cassie Level 4 evaluator for a number of years now. He's a member, was a member of the technical team, the national technical team, and also served as a volunteer on the technical committee in the past. And um, he's, a, he's a Level 4 ski instructor as well as a Level 4 snowboard instructor and really highly certified and experienced in all mountain sports, uh, Telemark and Nordic, uh, and on the mountain bike side as well, on the non-snow side of instructional instructor training. And so uh, he also brings a really strong background with um, you know, leading uh, large organizations. And so we're, we're happy to have Simon in this new position and um, definitely welcome into that position. So um, <clears throat> a few other changes on the regional side where we've got some changes happening when, with regards to our regional coordinators. And so you may or may not know our regional coordinators are responsible for running our level one and park one certification programs in each of the four uh, main regions across the country, which happen to be British Columbia, Northwest Territories, Yukon, which is Greg Daniels. And uh, Greg's been a regional coordinator there for a number of years, probably at least 80 or 90 years there. <laughs> I think more like about 20. Um, and uh, Andrew McCraney was our previous Alberta and Saskatchewan regional coordinator. And so Andrew has made the move to uh, the region of Ontario, which is actually the Ontario Manitoba region now. So this, this change left a bit of an opening or a, a vacancy there in Alberta. And so uh, we're welcoming John Smits to the regional coordinator position for Alberta, which is Alberta and Saskatchewan. And um, we definitely are happy to have John in that position. Uh, many of you as well will know John from his time in the Bow Valley and more recently at uh, Windsport in Calgary. And um, from Cassie courses, he's been uh, a high level evaluator, most recently a level four evaluator for Cassie for a number of years and spent many years as a volunteer on the tech committee and um, helping out most recently with the te national technical team as well. So um, we welcome John to that new role of uh, regional coordinator for Alberta and Saskatchewan. So um, along with those changes comes uh, a bit of a new location, a relocation, a new home for us. And so uh, our national head office is now, uh, was located in Cambridge, Ontario. It's now located in Collingwood, Ontario. And so um, we have a physical office space right on Huron, Huron Ontario Street in Collingwood at uh, 186 Huron, Ontario Street. So if you happen to be in Collingwood, if you're a local Ontario member and you want to stop in and check out our new digs, definitely stop in and say hi to uh, Kathy, Kathy Genge and the rest of the office staff there. 
Um, <clears throat> so the big thing for this year for us that we're probably the most excited about is that this is our 25th anniversary. So um, Cassie was formed uh, originally in the 1994 season, 94, 95 season. And um, so that puts us at our, uh, at our 25 years this year. And so we've been working on a lot of, a lot of cool stuff coming up uh, for the season to try to celebrate that and to try to involve all the members, all of you guys in that celebration as well. So um, some of it is still being rolled out and still being, uh, being planned as we get closer and closer to the winter. Um, watch for some uh, anniversary events, especially early season. So in conjunction with our fall member training sessions, which are still free, by the way, for members to attend a training session uh, throughout the season and our evaluator training, which happens pretty much in starting in mid-November and right through to mid-December at uh, eight different locations across the country. So we're going to try to have some smaller sort of celebrations in conjunction with those two events, the member sessions and evaluator training events. And then look for a more of a substantial celebration event in the spring. So we'd like to put together a what we're calling a spring session, um, likely in Western Canada somewhere at this point. It's looking like it may be in the Whistler area, Whistler Blackcomb, where we can get members together for a couple of days of on snow activities, member sessions, training, even just some some free riding with fellow Cassie members. Maybe get some of the some of the legends like uh, Greg Daniels back out. And um, some uh, just basically a good couple of days of, um, you know, time to kind of reconnect with some maybe some Cassie members that you haven't seen in a while. Um, and a couple couple other things that we've uh, introduced this year for the 25 years is a uh, um, special discount code that we're going to roll out through email or through if you order a printed membership card, you'll see the code there as well printed on the on the letter that comes with that. But check your emails coming up here in the next little while. Um, that'll get you a 25% discount on some of our new, new accessories. So we're going to have uh, 25th anniversary hats, um, die cut stickers, some apparel, uh, windbreaker jackets, hoodies, t-shirts, that type of thing. And also a new, uh, course giveaway, a toque, a 25th anniversary toque that all course participants will be getting this year as well. So look for that discount code for 25% off on the online store. Um, and then the other thing that we're, uh, we're really proud of and really excited about this year is that all of our courses will feature a $25 discount for the duration of the 2019-20 season. So um, when I say all courses, that's excluding level one courses because um, we wanted to pass that savings on the best as best we could to existing members. But um, the goal was to really pass that savings down to current members and uh, help you out into getting into that next course that you might be thinking about. So. Um, whether it's a level two course or a park one course or, um, you know, any of the, any of the other, um, exams or programs that we run, this is the year to do it because you've got that little extra, little extra savings. Um, you may have seen already on some of our social media that we've been tagging some of our posts, especially on Instagram with the, the hashtag Cassie ACMS 25. Uh, and we, I definitely would encourage you to start posting now as you're getting, you're sort of in preparation mode for the winter season. Uh, with some of that new gear and some of the some of the um, things that you're doing to get ready for the snow to fly, um, tag your photos with that hashtag. We'll try to collect as many of those as we can and display them on our uh, on our Instagram and Facebook channels and the rest of our social media as well. <clears throat> so on to the technical updates, which is really my uh, sort of my area of expertise um, in my role, newly kind of newly created role as director of education and programs. I work. Uh, in conjunction with the national technical team, which is our group of volunteers who are, are um, really our advisory committee or our, our advisory board when it comes to our technical products, our courses and our programs and our member sessions and, and uh, things like that. So uh, over the last couple of years, since we've had that group in place, we've been having some discussions around some of the things that we think we can really provide for the industry and for members and for snow schools in Canada and internationally now. Um, to help make uh, CASI certified snowboard instructors uh, the best around. So one of the things to look for is an improved uh, kids teaching resource. So we've identified in the last couple of years that, um, you know, we've always talked uh, in a limited way about teaching kids when it comes to our level one certification course, but uh, we, there's definitely been some room there for improvement. And so one of the things that we've published already, and it's uh, just starting to be rolled out on the website, is a special teaching kids guide. And it's called the Kids Can Snowboard Teaching Guide. 
And really what it does is it sort of creates a, a pocket reference. In, in this case, it's a PDF uh, electronic pocket reference, but accessible from a mobile device or anything like that. You can download through our resource center. And it just contains some tips and tricks and, and background sort of theory info for teaching kids, um, starting from that really early stage of, you know, under four, three to three to five sort of range. And then it progresses up right through to the 12 to 15 year old range. So for each uh, age category, we've broken it down into um, some different, uh, um, you know, tips and tricks and a toolbox of ideas to use when you're teaching teaching kids. So like I said, you can access that now in English only. We're working on releasing the French version as soon as we can. We're just waiting on some translations there. Um, and you can download that, uh, that small PDF and keep it as a, a bit of a resource for your teaching for this year. Um, attached to that as well, we've made some, uh, we've made some updates and some changes to our Park Instructor 1 course. So we've had a Park Instructor course. At one time we had a Park Instructor Level 1 and a Level 2 course. And a few years ago, due to just limited participation, we discontinued the Park 2 course. Uh, and I'll get back to that in a couple minutes for more, more info coming there. But, um, really the, the bulk of our time over this off season from the technical team was spent reviewing that Park Instructor 1 course. Um, having a look at the content and making some updates and some changes to the content to make it more current, more relevant, um, and just more useful for you as a member um, so that uh, you have that, that updated uh, park certification available to you if you haven't already taken it. One of the big things that we identified with the park instructor course was that um, we wanted to really try to aim it at doing a better job at improving the fundamentals. So the fundamental skills, and movements and uh, techniques that are um, kind of the crucial or the key for good freestyle snowboarding. So we're not talking about anything big and crazy here, but we are talking about um, uh, you know really diving into what makes a good entry level uh, instructor for snowboarders who are getting into the park for the first time. And so that's where we really did a, a bit of an overhaul on the course content. Um, the course is still two days in duration. And uh, it's broken down much like the level one instructor course is now where we spend some of the time looking at uh, the personal riding skills of the, the group and the participants and the instructors. And then we take that info and we break it down into, uh, okay, how do we pass this on to a new in, or a new snowboarder or a newer snowboarder who's ready to, ready to tackle freestyle terrain or start to learn some tricks. And um, so it's a, it's an exciting time for the park one course because it's, been uh, been all reviewed and uh, all updated, and um, so if you've been holding off on taking the Park One course, this is definitely the the time to take it. And this is this will be the season to take it for sure. Um, <clears throat> attached to the Park One course, we also made some changes to how we're uh, tackling the Level Three certification, and so we have reinstated or we've created a Park prerequisite for the Level Three certification now. So. Um, the Park One instructor starting this season, the 2019-20 winter, the Park One instructor course will be a prerequisite to taking the Level 3 instructor course. So this means that in order to participate in the Level 3 instructor course, you need to have already completed, successfully completed the Park Instructor 1 certification. And now we know that a lot of people in the past would have used the Park One course as a bit of a prep. It's always been an awesome prep because there is a bit of a freestyle aspect to the level three certification. So we've always recommended that people take the Park Instructor One course uh, leading up to the level three. Uh, the difference now is that it's actually a formal prerequisite. So that needs to be in place before you can go ahead and register there. Um, and really the whole idea here is we're, we're trying to provide better trained higher end instructors to the industry um, <clears throat> and to support the, those level twos who are working towards the level three so that when you do get there, you've got the necessary pieces in place as far as the prerequisite skills uh, and experience to do well at that level three certification. So that was uh, that's some of the reason behind that, that change or that update. Um, there's a couple points here as, as far as how this is going to be rolled out, and they're all outlined in our, our blog article here. But those of you or members who are already in the system for the level three, so meaning you've already maybe taken the level three instructor course, maybe you have not yet done the exams, maybe you've sat the exams and you've um, completed one or two parts of the level three certification. Basically, if you're already kind of in the process of getting the level three, that pre park one prerequisite won't apply to you. So that will be waived for this season only, this coming season, because you've already sort of taken those steps to getting that level three uh, certification. 
we would still, if you haven't taken the Park 1 course, though, it will definitely help you to get closer to, to passing that Level 3 instructor course. Um, <clears throat> attached to that for park evaluators, for those of uh, those people who have been teaching our park instructor courses over the years, because this is such a big change to the layout and the content of the course, we will be holding um, mandatory update training in, in addition to our regular evaluator training this coming winter in uh, December and most likely more closer to, to uh, January when we have park facilities available nationwide where we can do a really good job of updating uh, park instructor evaluators at that time. And then the other little note here is just to watch because we're uh, our goal is to really um, kind of resurrect that park level two park instructor level two course as well. We had a lot of great we've had a lot of great feedback from members and participants and evaluators over the years about the standard and the level and the course content and the duration and all the all of these things. So we've um, we've committed to putting some time into reviewing that park level two course with the goal of having an updated park two certification available for next year, winter twenty. 2020, 21. Um, and uh, so just watch for that. And the intention there is that that park level two course eventually will become a prerequisite for the level four instructor. Uh, so just keep that in, keep that in mind and watch the, uh, watch the appropriate channels for that for more info coming out, of, out about that. So with the, the Park 1 prerequisite um, attaching itself to the Level 3 now, it changed, gave us a little bit of flexibility to update the, uh, the Level 3 exams a little, uh, a little bit because Level 3 candidates now will have already satisfied that prerequisite Park skill from the new Park 1 course. So um, the, the second last point here in the article about what's coming this year just highlights the fact that our riding evaluation on the Level 3 course has changed somewhat. And so uh, we, what we did essentially is we removed the park maneuvers, the park or the freestyle riding evaluation aspect from the level three uh, exam. And uh, the level three exam now will be more free ride based. So um, large turns on groomed terrain, we've always had that or we've had that for a number of years now. Short turns on groomed terrain and ungroomed terrain. And then the new maneuver that we've, we're introducing to the level three exam this year is an intermediate sliding turn, which is performed uh, both forward and in the switch direction. And so this is an interesting maneuver that we've actually used on the level four instructor exams for a number of years now as a uh, just as a, a really good um, way to demonstrate fundamental skills, uh, fundamental understanding of the core competencies and the CASI technique, uh, the way that we really promote turning the snowboard at more of a basic level. And uh, the difference here is it's fundamental skills, core competencies performed in more challenging terrain. So rather than doing intermediate sliding turns on green or blue terrain, these will be these uh, turns will be done on blue or even steeper black terrain. So it's uh, intermediate skills in advanced terrain. And that's the way that we've really approached it on the level four um, certification exams. And that's the way that we'll approach it on the level three. And so it really, hopefully will help to support level four candidates as well. Um, if you're working your way through the system and you're, you've uh, achieved the level three and you're moving on to the level four, under this new system, you will have seen this intermediate sliding turns maneuver or this, this testing task when you get to the level four. And hopefully our goal there is that it's not gonna be such a new thing for you because you will have had some exposure and some feedback on it. And if you're a level three uh, starting this year forward, you will have passed that exam having done this maneuver. So, um, and then just the last one here talks about mandatory training hours and uh, keeping an eye on some of our online conversations and our Facebook posts. There was a little bit of confusion that was kind of sparked from this point here. And so um, this is maybe a good time for me to clarify there. So really this just refers to the duration of our courses. So each of our courses has an hours of training attached to it when it comes to the actual course presentation. So it's important to note here, we're not talking about um, training hours provided by your school, your snow school. We're talking about the actual time that you spend on the course. So for example, the level one course is compiled of um, comprised of 18 hours of training. So uh, the level two is uh, 24 hours. So the big thing with this one is that each of the course guides now will just specify that it's, it's mandatory that participants on the courses attend all parts of the course. And so if someone isn't able to attend, say, one of the half day sessions, then they're not they haven't fulfilled all the required hours, the training hours as part of the course, and then they won't be eligible to receive an evaluation at the end of the course. And I think that was where some of the confusion came out where 
Um, some people had thought that maybe that had to do with training hours that are provided or provided by a school and showing a minimum number of training hours before moving on to the next level. And so that's not what we're referring to here. This is just simply the, the durations of our, of our different courses. So that's about it. Um, like I said, keep an eye on some of the, uh, some of the things coming out with regards to the 25th anniversary. We have some cool stuff planned. Winter is going to be here soon. Our goal is to uh, keep you updated uh, with these uh, short presentations, short webinars. Um, I think what we'll do on the next one, if you tune back in in the next couple of weeks, we'll dive into that park instructor course um, and really take a look at the park instructor course guide and what's involved with the new course, what the evaluation uh, standards are, the teaching and the riding standards, and uh, what are some things for you to know if you're thinking about taking this new park instructor course. So that's about it. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you check back for the next one. We'll keep you updated when we're